With that, I'll turn it over to Maria Paola, who will be talking about uh, her country's recent triumphs. And uh, yeah, thank you so much again for being here. And I'm really looking forward to the discussion. So Maria Paola, to you. So Maria Paola is beginning her presentation. Hello, good evening to everybody. It is a great honor to be here with you all. I'm speaking here about this really important topic and to tell you all a little bit what the process has been like in Colombia to achieve um, our victory in relation to abortion rights in February. I will let you know what the context was. The situation was prior to February. Before 2006, abortion was completely criminalized in Colombia in all circumstances. And in the year 2006, thanks to the mobilization of various women's organizations and other NGOs, abortion was criminalized in three circumstances in Colombia. Number one, in the case of the women still being in danger, interpretada como estado completo de bienestar, es decir, causal salud que incluía incluso la other health factors including mental health. Sentencia que este esta despenalización se obtuvo mediante una criminalization constitucional came through the constitutional court in Colombia. Sentencias constitucionales que brindaron este derecho and was later uh, reinforced by the elevating of these rights into fundamental rights in the Colombian Constitution, which included rights to health, to dignity, and freedom from torture and inhumane treatment. These things were already included in our Constitution. What happened throughout the years? What happened is that for women who were, who did fit within these three factors that were allowed under abortion law, they were still unable to access abortion due to the lack of uh, an appropriate health care system. And that many women did not know or understand the existence of abortion rights after the process. Very few women, uh, even those who fit within the um, parameters allowed for abortion, were actually able to access So, even after abortion was decriminalized in 2006, around these three factors, more than 400 women were criminalized. None of these women were uh, upper-class women. The majority of the women who were criminalized were working-class women, Afro-Colombian women, migrant women, women in the country. Also, thousands of women became sick as a result of unsafe and clandestine abortion. Inseguros. Entonces, a raíz de esta situación, so en due to this, 2017, the just cause or causa justa was born that proposed a unity of action between the various uh, women's organizations and organizations dedicated to reproductive protection with the purpose of eliminating. Uh, the criminalization of abortion. Este proceso se llevó a cabo con la construcción de más de 90 argumentos desde los jurídicos, políticos, sociales. The proposal was taken forward with various legal arguments that finally concluded that finally concluded with the demand to decriminalize abortion in 2020 during the pandemic. Who signed this proposal of this demand? Five organizations, including 
y católicas por el derecho a decidir. Pero included various groups that defend reproductive legales, rights. Más de 114 organizaciones en Colombia in total, adherimos o suscribimos la... More than 114 organizations supported this particular demand that started in 2004. One of those organizations was the Worker Social Education Workers Party of Colombia that supported this demand. This demand was accepted by the Constitutional Court at the end of 2020. We presented them with an urgent message, um, including the fact that many women were dying or were injured as a result of unsafe abortions. And that during the, in, in, that during the pandemic, maternal mortality increased in Colombia. And one of the fundamental causes of this was unsafe Just similar to the case that Lourdes mentioned in the United States, which stated that the maternal mortality rate amongst women of oppressed groups is high. La tercera parte, el 33%. Amongst the 400 who were criminalized for conducting an abortion after 2006, a third of them, a third of them also, also underwent situations of domestic or partner violence. Cuando es un país mayoritariamente urbano. La demanda es admitida, los antiderechos utilizan so, todo tipo de demandas. And the anti-abortion rights group attempted a number of legal maneuvers to counter that. So what happened was that this delayed the demand and it actually took 315 days for the court to get a response. So finally, on February 22nd of 2022, de gestación quiere decir legalized abortion until the 24th month of pregnancy para el aborto y que posterior a las 24 semanas after I'm sorry 24 weeks and after 24 weeks ya antes de mencionar abortion would remain legal with the three circumstances including if uh, the pregnant person's life was in It was due to a large social movement, not only including uh, that part which was led by just cause or The social movement was necessary given that our legal arguments did not happen enough to win this demand. However, in 2019, there was a large social movement or uprising in Colombia. Movilización nacional muy importante, uno a final de 2019 y otro en abril, en, entre ma, abril. The aspect of the social movement started in 2019, the other in 2021. Causa Pustar just caused it is not a mass movement, but it is a coalition of various women's rights organizations. But there was a mass movement during this period against the government and its policies. But during this time, there was a great advance in democratic consciousness of the masses, including the acceptance of reproductive rights. Well, I think this is fundamental to understand uh, the reasons behind. Estoy viendo que la interpretación en inglés no está muy bien. Estoy intentando hablar lo más despacio posible. No sé si necesitan que pare un momento.
We're just um, waiting for one moment to get the problem with the interpretation uh, that we understand is uh, choppy. So uh, wait, so just one second, we might be switching out interpreters. Um, I think it has to do with uh, internet connection. So uh, one second. Okay. Uh, well, yes, uh, so I'll repeat some of what I already said. Um, so, I wanted to explain that how the Just Cause movement uh, won this victory. Uh, and uh, right now, uh, Just Cause is not a mass movement. It's a relatively, relatively small movement, at least compared to the general population. Uh, it's connected more to the feminist movement, uh, to uh, medical organizations, legal organizations, etc. But in Colombia, uh, in 2019, uh, with the upright or the uptick in uh, the class struggle in the country at the time, uh, it was for general rights against the government, uh, and it was, and in that moment they were calling for the downfall of the government, uh, and. It was a major upsurge in people's consciousness around uh, these political questions at the time, not just around uh, abortion rights, but also around general democratic rights. Um, so this movement, which existed in the streets, uh, organized two very important strikes. One uh, was in 2019 that lasted 15 days and another one in May and June of 2021 that lasted 45 days, uh, which uh, gave uh, the gave the leverage that we need in order to win our victory and in order uh, for uh, Causa Justa to be, uh, Just Cause to be organizing in the streets as this was going on. So, what really gave us the victory was the more general process of mobilization in Colombia, the uptick in social protests. And it's something, maybe I should leave it here to see what questions there are. Uh, and then a few things we could perhaps embellish in more details and we'll see where the discussion goes.